Welcome to Blueprint OT. In this video, we will take a look on direct exposure using a laser. So we're taking a look on how to produce a PCB with etching. So etching is still the main process. The only difference is that we're trying to expose the film directly with a laser, directly lasering the layout onto the circuit board without using a film and a classical UV light exposure. But before we get started, let's take a look on the different techniques to produce a PCB without a laser. So one a bit uncommon technology that you know already from other videos is printing a PCB. This is a relatively new technology and is basically printing directly the circuit onto the circuit board, but more for prototyping. The classical technology would be exposure using a film. So you have a UV light, as you can see here, and then you basically expose the film onto the photosensitive coating of the PCB, and then you can go for etching after development. So as you can see here in this machine, we can expose from the top and the bottom at the same time, and we put in the PCB between two layers of film for the top and the bottom layer. Even though it looks pretty cool, it's actually a bit difficult. You have to produce a film in the first place. If you want to change something, you have to produce another film. And also the developing process is another wet chemical process, as you can see here. And it's a bit nasty to do this in a prototype way. And also you can make a lot of mistakes, like being too long in the developer bath or having a concentration too high, and then you destroy everything. What we are attempting is to laser the layer directly onto the photosensitive coating. But to do so, you would need a UV laser which we had unfortunately not available. So we used a normal CO2 laser and basically tried to burn the whole photosensitive coating completely away. So to do so, we had different tests. So we had one to 10 different settings of the laser, starting with 40% power and 10% speed until the fifth test layer and afterwards decreasing the speed until 0.5% instead of 10%. So here we can see the results of the lasering process. So we can see already here the lines and the numbers in the coating. So it's actually not the copper, it's the coating itself that's changing the color. We can see from the beginning until four or five that we have only the coating affected but from level five, six and seven on, we are more and more damaging the actual copper already. So we're actually doing a bit more than we are attempting to. What we can see here is that at number 10, we actually melted through the whole circuit board. So not just the coating, also the copper on the top, the copper on the bottom and the core in between, which is actually fiberglass and epoxy. So if you know a little bit about lasers, you will know that melting through a material is basically not what a laser is supposed to do. You're basically aiming to evaporate, to burn the material right away instead of heating it up that it's melting and then dripping through the hole that it's just melted through the material. So that's what happened here, not what we aimed for. It was simply for the reason that we had such a low speed on the laser that the heat could accumulate at one spot and therefore melt the whole material away. But never mind this little cosmetic mistake. Afterwards we went for etching. This is a time lapse of the whole etching process and if you take a look a closer look at number seven eight nine and ten you will see that the copper is already changing and already gone at this moment and we can barely see the yellowish greenish color of the core material of the circuit board also number five and six are looking good number four is also clearing up a little bit. This was actually in total 30 minutes so we really took our time to give every part a chance to clear up. At the results we can see that from 4 on we have actually very good results and even number 1, 2 and 3 have like partially etched areas and surprisingly number 10 did not perform very well. If we take a closer look we can see that we have quite a good definition from number 4 on. I would say 5, 6, 7 is the favorite, maybe also 8, but we can also see that the diameter is a little bit increasing at the end. That's actually something we don't want to have. So even though the edges and the finish looks good on a visual inspection, we wanted to take a closer look and went to a microscope to take a really close look on the edges of the material as well as on the cleared areas to see if the copper is really gone. So if we take a look on the screen on the results, we can see that the copper is really completely gone and the edged areas and the edge itself is actually quite good. It's a little bit rough, but better than expected. 
especially if you take into consideration that the laser was running from the left to the right. So it's always accelerating, braking again, accelerating, braking again. So repeating this process with a high precision is actually not an easy task and having such a good result on the edges is actually quite good. So we've been quite satisfied and we will go for a full layout using the laser to laser away, burn away the coating completely and then go for etching with the optimal settings we just found in our experiment here. So thanks for watching so far. Please let me know if you're interested in more videos like this and I will make sure to give you some more insights and experiments like this and all the results and parameters we pick up along the way. So thanks for watching and see you next time.